LLCs, partnerships, corporations, sole proprietor, what's the right type of entity for your syndication or fund? Today we're gonna to do a video that's a blast from the past. It's a couple years old, but it's still very relevant and very valid and up-to-date information. So it is a discussion about how you would choose your entity type and that entity type that would fit for your syndication or fund. I hope you find it useful. We are going through the core, specifically we're talking about company, and even more specifically, we are going through foundation. So today segment, we are discussing entity type and what type of entity should you be forming? So you've heard lots of different things about corporations, LLCs, everybody's got an opinion DBA. So we're going to go through what each of those look like. And then we're going to talk about how exactly you choose what makes the most sense for you. Uh, give you a little uh, advice and feedback on what the next steps are and who you'd want to talk to to really firm up that decision and then um and then you're going to have a pretty good guidance on how to do it. And then ultimately you'll make a decision on, on what it's going to look like. Now these types feed back into your structure. So each of those entity types, that management uh, entity that you're going to form, it might be an LLC, it might be a corporation. The, uh, the, um, buildings themselves. They might be LLCs. They might be corporations. You might even want to do them as uh, DBAs, though I doubt that, that you would actually want that. So let's talk about those different uh, types that there are. So to start us off, we've got kind of the simplest. We've got DBAs. So the DBA stands for doing business as. These are normally filed in your local city uh, or your local municipality. Um, basically, it just lets them know that there's a fictitious name that you're going to be using uh, and associated with business. Uh, this is everything from your sole proprietor. It could be a partnership, uh, but DBAs are, uh, are this type. The other type is, um, is partnerships themselves. Again, that gets filed. Typically, it gets filed at the local level to get a name associated, but this really depends on your particular state. So in California, if you're going to have a general, general partnership, you actually don't need to file anything with the state. Not all states follow that sort of uh, method. Some do require that you file partnership agreements with them. So you need to check on what your local rules are if you decide ultimately that a partnership oops, makes the most sense for what you're going to be doing. The next type is an LLC. Uh, LLC stands for Limited Liability Corporation. Uh, these have been around since the 1970s. Uh, it was an alternative that came out of uh, smaller companies not happy with all of the requirements in order to act as uh, that corporations were being held to. Um, so they are a little bit simpler and they have some different nuances with those as well. Um, lastly, we have corporations. So you, uh, a corporation is its own entity as well. It gets filed to, uh, with your state, uh, and it is a, uh, it's a very common mechanism. You've, I'm sure you've heard of them. So you may be asking yourself, well, why didn't I write S Corp for C Corp here? So S Corp and C Corp are actually tax, uh, uh, ways of filing taxes. They have tax implications. They don't have actual implications as it relates to an actual property itself. So you may be surprised to learn that an LLC can be an S Corp or it can be uh, treated as a partnership. It's really up to you and how you choose to do that, basically whether or not you make an S-Corp election with the IRS. Um, so that's why we didn't do those. We will be talking a little bit about tax strategy, but not a lot in this because really the best one to answer that, it gets really specific for what your own particular needs are. And so for that, probably you'll want to talk with the accountant that you've already identified or will identify as part of your team. Uh, we'll be talking about teams in a later on segment as well. 
So these are the four main uh, types of entities that uh, we're going to go through. So the first uh, question that we ask ourselves is, how many owners uh, can there be? Uh, so uh, this will kind of rule some things out for you. Sometimes it won't. So a DBA is one person. So it's always one person. That's who it is. It's a sole proprietor acting as one person. A partnership always requires two or more people in order to be a partnership. You can't be a partner alone. So it's uh, two or more. And you actually can be uh, have one person as an LLC or as a corporation. So, um, so if you have more than one person, that kind of rules out DBAs, but all the others are on the table. So then let's talk about asset protection. Oops. So asset protection is very important. Um, so there are... Um, there are two kinds of asset protection that we like to talk about. We have uh, what's called inside out and outside in. So let's write that down. Inside out. So inside out asset protection is the is the protection that you would have uh, as an individual of uh, the manager or the main executive inside of the company uh, to protect you from outside from the outside. Um, so it would be uh, you need to make changes uh, to the outside. So say you have a huge amount of debt, uh, whether or not you'd be able to be relieved of that liability um, is what we would consider outside, uh, inside out asset protection. And outside in is the opposite of that. So it is, say there's a, uh, a lawsuit taking place and somebody is suing the LLC or the, the corporation or, or whoever, um, whether or not that protects you from liability against them. So as far as DBAs, there is no asset protection whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't exist. Um, in terms of partnerships, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So we have two kinds of partners. Um, we have general partners and we have limited partners. The general partner is the one who makes all the decisions, who does all the work, um, and the limited partner is the person who mostly just invested the money and just sits back and lets the general partner do the work. So uh, as far as asset protection goes, for the, uh, the limited partner, it is good asset protection, uh, but there is no asset protection for general partners at all. Um, now, for uh, the LLC, we have um, uh, an LLC is good for inside out. Uh, it's good for protecting against that, uh, and it's probably less good but it's not as well tested, but it's probably somewhat less good um, about for outside in. And we can get into much more detail about this uh, in a consultation. Um, then we're starting to talk about charging orders and things like that um, and different kinds of LLCs in different states and how those affect um, for this purpose. It's pretty good, um, and I wouldn't rule out asset protection for an LLC. I wouldn't base asset protection, um, like getting rid of an LLC, uh, just because of that. Um, for uh, corporations, corporations are good for inside-out liability. Uh, it's very easy to just file, uh, just BK or bankruptcy a, uh, a corporation and the debts of that corporation go away. It is bad for outside in as long as it is a closely held corporation. So if, if you are the only uh, person in the corporation or it's extremely small, but really you're doing all the work, uh, you really aren't going to have very great outside in protection. Um, so you probably are going to get the most amount of asset protection from the LLC. Um, 
In terms of governance and management, and you know, this is what we're talking about here uh, is how easy is it to get through all the paperwork and, and comply with all the legal formalities. Um, for uh, DBA, it's easy. There's very, very, very little. Maybe you need to f update something every year or every few years uh, with your local municipality, and that's it. Uh, with a partnership, it's also pretty easy. It varies state by state exactly what needs to be done. Um, so we'll just put pretty easy. And then in terms of uh, an LLC, it can be easy to complex. This is where it comes down to uh, whether the LLC is member managed or, or, uh, or manager managed. So a manager managed LLC is where the manager uh, makes all of the decisions. So if you or your entity is the manager of the managed LLC, you're the one making all the decisions and you just take uh, to your investors uh, as to a vote as necessary as required by your operating agreement. Um, in general, the, it's pretty easy to keep them up to date, keep them things going. It really becomes down to what your operating agreement says and unless there are some sort of specific rules of your state in order to comply. So in many states, they don't require a board of directors. They don't even necessarily require any uh, executive officers. Um, and so it, that can be pretty simple. Um, whereas a corporation, is almost always complex. You uh, typically need a board of directors and officers. Um, now, in terms of maintenance costs, that's going to be very specific on your individual states. Um, so you really, you could draw out and find out through your local state what the costs are going to be for each of these. Um, and then you've got your uh, multi-state issues, like say you have... Um, you know, everybody thinks, well, you file a corporation in Delaware. That isn't always the case. If I file a corporation in Delaware and I'm doing business here in California, I still have to file with the state of California. I still have to pay my taxes with the state of California. Um, and I have to let the, the California know that this foreign corporation, this Delaware corporation, is doing business in its state. Um, and it's because of that rule, we're not going to go into choosing jurisdictions beyond the easiest way to choose a jurisdiction is to just put it wherever your company is. Um, there is nuance in there and there may be reasons why choosing a different jurisdiction would be better. But that's outside of the bounds of this discussion. So once you've got your um, uh your kind of this matrix in mind. The next thing to think about is how to make the decision on what to file as. So um, here I would really start thinking about the entity that you're going to be doing. So let's start with the manager's entity right now. So what's most important out of this to your, um, to your, uh, um, Actually, one more. Let's put one more topic here because this can be important too. So let's put record keeping as well. Uh, record keeping for DBA is extremely easy. Um, I would say most of the time it's easy to do a partnership. It's pretty darn easy to do a LLC, but we'll put moderate just to differentiate it from easy. And by that, I mean, you're gonna have to file a statement of information probably every year with, uh, with the state, um, but it, it, it's very simple. It's a one page form almost everywhere. Um, so it's pretty simple to do. Now for a corporation, it's much more complex. Um, you need to file, you need to have minutes, of regular scheduled board meetings. Pretend I can spell. Uh, you still need to do the statement, oops, the statement of information. Um, and you need to have records of any sort of decision make decisions that take place. 
Now, if you don't do that, your corporation could very easily be determined by a court as not being a legitimate corporation, and you'd get in, get rid of any sort of asset protection that you had from the very beginning anyway. That's why it's very important to comply with the record-keeping rules. Now, when it comes time to make a decision about what you want to, uh, what kind of entity you think you need to form, uh, I don't think there's a. I, I don't think there any attorney would ever recommend anybody do something as a sole proprietor or even as a partnership for something like this. Uh, a uh, perhaps there there are good times for a sole proprietor for a partnership, especially when you need extremely low overhead. You need it to be very easy, and you want taxes to be very easy. Um, that's pretty much how we'd make the decision here. Um, uh, but this is just generally not going to be the best choice for you uh, to do a DBA or a partnership. Now, an LLC versus a corporation, it really comes down to a few things. And what I think of most way I would think about it is how easy do I want my governance and how easy do I want my record keeping? I'm getting about the same amount of asset per, uh uh, about the same amount of asset protection, a little bit more with an LLC. So it's actually got a really great uh, structure for me, uh, unless uh, um, the only exception would be if I really am going to be using this kind of structure anyway for a board and for officers, or maybe it's uh, it's something that your investors would rather see because they're more familiar with corporations as well. So almost always for the property itself, you're going to use a an LLC because they're so much easier to put together uh, and the paperwork is so much less that it's it, it's just generally easier. Uh, in terms of a corporation, uh, unless if Again, the, my, my thoughts would be, well, if you wanted to do, put together a C-Corp, uh, because that's what your investors were used to and that's what they were requiring. Now, a C-Corp is a type of uh, taxable entity. Um, so it would be a corporation, but filed with the IRS that you would be taxed as a C-Corp. Um, and it has different tax rates. It has different uh, opportunities for deductions. LLCs and S-Corps have an opportunity for a 199A deduction. Um, and your accountant can walk you through that if that's appropriate for you. Uh, they also can walk you through whether or not it makes sense because corporations in general are not subject to self-employment tax um, most of the time. So uh, it, it really would become down to what do I, if I need to file a C corp as a C corp, I'm going to have to do it as a corporation. I'm not going to have that availability in an LLC. Um, and really, am, what kind of level am I putting it? into? Is this something that I want uh, to really make something easy for me to do and be able to trade and move people in and out of for real longevity? I'm probably going to choose a corporation uh, because it's just better set up for that sort of thing. But if this is something where um, I'm going to just manage it, uh, I'm not quite sure the long-term future of it, whether it's just going to be five years or whatnot, I might very well choose an LLC. So this, uh, so I would go through and rank those and just kind of decide, well, this is important to me, this is important to me, this is important to me. Make that decision and that's your decision. You're going to have, it's quite easy to do different entity types for different types of entities. So your properties will, will almost always be LLCs. Um, but perhaps your, your management company will be a corporation and that's totally okay. Um, so Go through that, think about that, make a decision, and uh, the next step then really is to get that filed. And so I would file that uh, your management entity sooner rather than later. That's what you're going to be building your name and reputation under. Um, so that's really the first decision you've got to make. And when you do that, you have a limited time to make an S-Corp election. So talk to your accountant at the either as you're doing it or very close in time to when you're doing it uh, to see to get their input on whether it makes more sense for you to be uh, taxed as a partnership or taxed as a S-Corp. 
I hope that has been helpful. Make those decisions, write it down, and uh, we will see you in the next session. I hope you found that video helpful. While LLCs are probably the most likely candidate for what syndication structure or fund structure you're going to use, as you can see, it's not the only choice. If we can help you choose a uh, the bright kind of entity for you and make your syndication or fund journey better, please give us a call. My name is Tilden Moschetti. I am a syndication attorney with the Moschetti Syndication Law Group.